Hidden San Francisco, the guide to lost landscapes, unsung heroes, and radical histories. Stop L8, Women Workers and the Right to Vote, the Emporium at Eddie Powell and Market Streets. From the failed 1896 suffrage campaign to the ultimately successful effort in 1911, women's role in the daily life of San Francisco noticeably changed. Whereas in 1896 no woman could comfortably walk down the street without a male escort, lest she be considered immoral, after the 1906 earthquake and fire a deeper change in urban life was well underway. In particular, an influx of young single women began to work for wages and live independently in city apartment buildings. The rebuilding city saw a great expansion of downtown offices to manage far-flung trade networks and new retail apparel outlets, which took over the adjacent Union Square area from the prostitution and vice that had been thriving in that area before the earthquake. Many of the young women who found jobs in this new economy moved into nearby respectable residential hotels in the Tenderloin. The second block of Turk Street had a concentration of young women in its residential hotels, the 1909 census showing a 70% female population in two establishments there. Overall, about 30% of hotel and lodging house occupants in the Tenderloin were female during this era. Many of these new working women embraced the growing, white, union movement in the city. For example, the Waitresses Union was launched in San Francisco in 1908. It was inspired by the return home of Maud Younger, the millionaire waitress who had grown up wealthy in San Francisco in the 1870s. On her way through New York in the 1890s to tour Europe, she visited a tenement on the Lower East Side of Manhattan and was so moved by the poverty and resilience of the local women there, she stayed for years. During that time, she participated in early organizing campaigns and strikes among the immigrant women in New York who began the Waitresses Union there. On her return to San Francisco, she launched Local 48 for white women waitresses only, with offices at 440 Ellis Street in the Tenderloin. Before long, she was not only the head of the dynamic new union, but also a lead organizer of the campaign to get women the right to vote. In 1911, California women won the right to vote after decades of campaigning, a watershed year in California politics that brought in many progressive reforms, including the popular initiative. Early efforts during the post-Civil War Reconstruction period to gain women's suffrage made little progress, and a major push in the middle of the 1890s also fell short. The new urban working women were productive participants in society and they were increasingly assertive about their political rights. The 1911 women's suffrage campaign was markedly different from previous efforts. Instead of relying on middle and upper class leaders, unionized working women formed the Wage Earner Suffrage League and asserted themselves in door-to-door -door campaigning, reaching out to voters, all men after all, where they were, in bars and restaurants, on streetcars and in the streets. The right to vote for women passed with only a 3,500 vote majority out of a quarter million male-only votes in California. When working women campaigned in bars, they convinced enough of their union brothers that they would not use their new voting power to ban alcohol, which may have tipped the balance. They also used new technology, notably the automobile, to engage in mobile, highly visible public campaigning. The campaign was headquartered in a donated office in the Emporium Building just across Market from the Tenderloin Gateway intersection of Eddie and Powell Streets, today's cable car turnaround at Halliday Plaza. <laughs> <laughs>